Hi guys, I hope you're having a good day today. I'm Suling and I'm a watercolor artist from Malaysia. In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted a pomegranate that is still hanging on the tree. This is not a tutorial video per se, but more like me showing you my process of painting, such as the way I create shades or how I decide the next steps and so on. And hopefully you could learn something along the way. So without further ado, let's dive in. To give you an idea of what actually took place, the actual time I spent on this painting was around 2 hours and I painted it on 2 sittings over 2 days. So I had to trim and speed up the video to get it down to less than an hour. As I didn't actually plan out my color selection or the painting steps before I filmed this, so I'm kind of going with the flow, which is pretty much my thought process whenever I'm painting. As usual, I will start with a relatively light wash of colors so that I can map up where all the colors should go. The pen set I'm using here is a Korean brand watercolor called Mungyo or Mungyo. Mine is a 48 color set, but they also come in smaller sets of 24 or 36 colors. I will leave a link in the description if you're interested. So here I'm basically trying to fill up the fruit with an orangey red wash. I probably could have used the wet on wet technique to help me fill up the color faster and more evenly, but since the colors of the pomegranate skin are uneven and there are different shades everywhere, so it's okay. And also because I'm going to apply many layers of colors afterwards, so it doesn't really matter at this point of time if the colors look a bit patchy. Next, I want to mark out the darker areas. How I usually do this is to first apply more saturated paint on a small area and then blend it to the surrounding areas using a damp brush. I suppose this is one of my favorite techniques and if you have watched some of my videos, whether here or in Skillshare, you would probably notice I use this technique a lot. By the way, I'm using a 100% cotton cold pressed paper from Atto by Campep. I will leave the name in the description, but I don't think you can find this on Amazon. Mm, it's more like a common brand here around my region. For the colors on the fruit, I'm using several types of red hues. I'm not going to give the specific names, but they range from orange to orangey red to bright warm red and deep cool red. I'm referring to the visual reference for the color choices, but I will use whichever that I think is close enough. I'm applying brush strokes in a curved direction. This will give a shape and um, a, the rounded form to the fruit. And I also make sure to avoid adding too many layers of colors to the lighter parts at this moment. Next, I moved on to the bottom part of the fruit, uh, I think it's called calyx. I'm now using a reddish brown.
I'm leaving some white space there to be filled in with a dark green later. Now adding a dash of red while the surface is still wet, so I'm applying the wet on wet technique here. Now adding in a darker brown, which was actually mixed using a brown and dark green. Now moving on to the branches and stems, starting with a dark brown. Somehow I always feel that uh, branches are the easiest to paint, especially when they are not the primary subject matter in the painting. I usually just apply a thicker paint on the darker areas, like what I'm doing now, and then using a damp brush, I blend the paint into the lighter areas. Again, I'm using my favorite technique. To add shades to darker areas, I will just drop in a little bit more of paint. Moving on to the leaves. Although I try to follow closely the colors I see in the reference photo, but sometimes I make my own artistic decisions and paint them slightly different. Each of us interprets uh, differently of what we see. Unless we are painting a scientifically correct illustration, otherwise I think it's okay to have your own rendition of the art that you are making. What's more important for me is to make sure that the form and dimension of the subject matter is maintained and is clear to the viewers.
What I'm doing now is lifting some colors off these areas because I want it to be lighter before I add on more colors and details. Basically, it's just using a damp brush to wet the surface and then press on the area with the paper towel. This is called the lifting technique. So now I'm trying to work on the darker areas on the calyx.
So continuing my painting on the second day, now working on the most important and fun part, which is the fruit itself. I somehow like to get all the easy parts done first and leave the most challenging part till the end. And today I will be adding layers and layers of colors to further build up the shape and texture of the fruit. Remember that this video has been sped up. Although I might look like I'm painting very fast, in actual I was working slowly and carefully. It's important that you take time to pause and look at the visual reference and your painting, and then decide how to proceed one section at a time. Also, always start with light washes and add more colors and shades gradually layer by layer. You wouldn't want to go too dark right in the beginning and then realize that you can't revert it.
I think the most challenging part of this piece is creating the texture on the skin of the pomegranate. I actually didn't have any idea in mind how I wanted to do this, so I was basically experimenting and see which method works. I'm applying dots of dark brown and then soften them with a damp brush and then dot it again with more paint. And if I noticed areas that need more colors, I will go ahead and work on it. Now I'm starting to do some stippling with the tip of my brush and then blur it with the slightly wet brush. I like this effect so I continue to use this method to add texture to the other areas. This method also helps to add shades and different tones so I'm happy with this.
So if you like what you have been watching, please don't forget to like this video or subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions regarding the technique or supplies I used in this video, do leave them in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.